guys, hi. I don't even know how to start this. Welcome to the Cassie Makes Art YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a little bit here. Um, if you are subscribed, then uh, if you were one of my 350 some odd subscribers, you ha were here when I was probably doing plan with me's and stuff like that. Um, doing like unboxings for stickers and planner supplies. And I was doing the Honeybee Shop Babe Box, which I still love by the way. Um, I'm going in a little bit of a different direction and there's a reason I haven't been here and I just want to talk to you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm still planning. I'm still playing with stickers. I'm still doing all that. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain. So first of all, hi, what, thanks for being here. Um, I am going to do my makeup as I kind of talk to you guys because I feel really ugly and I haven't done my makeup in a while, like full on makeup. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Or at least we're going to attempt, because I don't know if I even remember how to do it. So yeah, let's just see if I still remember how to do my makeup. And while I do that, I'm going to just kind of chat with you guys about what's been going on and where I've been. Um, oh, I forgot how much bronzer really just, really just adds something to your face. Um, okay, so... If you follow me on Instagram, you'll be like, well, you haven't been anywhere. Like, I've, I'm very active on Instagram and um, semi-active on TikTok. But I have not been active on YouTube other than posting some shorts. But I haven't, like, done full-on videos. And the reason is because I've been overthinking it for the better part of two years. And I am tired of not doing something that I want to do just because I'm overthinking it and I want it to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. Okay? And if you're here thinking this is going to be some, like, aesthetically pleasing channel, like, I'm going to try to make it somewhat aesthetically pleasing, but the truth of it is I'm a mess. Okay? I have what I'm pretty sure is undiagnosed ADHD. Uh, I have been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and, um, uh, major depression or whatever they call it basically like they don't really know what to call it so they just say oh yeah you've got clinical depression and you've got generalized anxiety disorder which means you're always anxious but we don't really know why and I'm pretty sure that I have ADHD but that's that's a whole other topic and I'm going to the doctor soon so I'm sure you've seen the word neurodivergent uh floating around or neurospicy as some people like to call it um Basically, it just means you are not neurotypical, meaning you have some sort of, you know, whether it's anxiety or autism or ADHD, something in your brain is a little bit different. And that's okay, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, like, make being neurodivergent my whole personality, but unironically, like, or ironically, I guess, it kind of, like, already is. Like, I can't really hide it, and I've always just been myself and I think I'm just coming to terms with the fact that like there might be something with me that's actually diagnosable other than just saying oh you have generalized anxiety disorder like for me if I do get a uh, diagnosis for ADHD or maybe it's autism spectrum disorder or maybe it's both or whatever because I used to like have the mindset of like well does it really matter? Like, I don't really need a label for whatever I am or whatever I have. But it would be validating. You know? It would just be validating to know, like, oh, that's why I am the way that I am. And, like, that's fine. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Really, I just want to seek a diagnosis, diagnosis for validation and also um, possibly to, you know, change up my medication or add something. You know, anything to help me live a more enjoyable life, you know, because it, I find life to be very, very difficult. I find the life that I am currently living to be very difficult, meaning I have to work a nine to five job. I don't get to do the things that I want to do. I just work all the time. Um, I'm not happy, you know, I, I think... I'm trying to get to a place in my life where I am happy and I don't know, I don't know if that will ever happen. Um, I would like to think that it will, but I'm just, 
I'm not happy with my life as it currently stands. And I am 30 years old, which I know, you know, relatively is still young, but like I feel, I feel like once I turned 30, I really just started to like reassess everything that's going on in my life and think like, you know, I don't have to live the way that I'm living. Like I don't have to have this nine to five job. Like I'm so grateful for the internet for showing me that there are people out there living the life that I want to be living because it shows me that it is possible. I think the thing about it though is that a lot of those people aren't showing the bad parts of life and the bad, you know, the difficulties that they go through. You know, if they're a small business owner and they, you know, they make it look like everything is peaches and cream, but it's not. And I'm here to just kind of take you guys along my journey. And, you know, my goal is to quit my nine to five job. And I want to first preface this by saying that I don't think that having a nine to five job is bad at all. Um, I know there's a lot of like, especially in the MLM community, which I know. Um, <laughs> no, absolutely not. But I think there's a lot of like demonization of the nine to five life. And like for some people, they love their nine to five job and they like having their vacation time and their, their schedule. And listen, if you're happy, that's fantastic. You know, I just want people to be happy with the lives that they're living because we're not here very long in the grand scheme of things. And we should not be miserable. And I am miserable uh, most of the time. I, I will tell you, um, most days, you know, Monday through Friday, I'm, I'm pretty miserable. And uh, I don't want to live like that anymore. Let me just kind of give you an update for the few of you who have been here since I was planning with Cass. If you've been here since planning with Cass, please leave a comment. I would just love to see like my OG subscribers and supporters. Um, but I used to do plan with me videos, you know, me like decorating my planner and talking about decorative planning and how much I love it and when I first started this channel, believe it or not, I was a Happy Planner stan. I loved Happy Planner, and I bought exclusively Happy Planner stuff. Um, I could not be more different now. Um, I shop 99% of the time. Uh, the planner-related stuff and journaling-related stuff that I'm buying is from small businesses, and that's just what I choose to do. And I have my own small business. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot has changed since back then. I am no longer uh, doing, like, plan with me videos. And I'm not saying that I won't do those. It's just not what I want to do. I never really enjoyed it, to be honest with you. Because planning and, like, paper crafting, um, journaling, painting, all those things, I find it really hard to record myself doing them. And I've been really trying to like do it a little bit more, but I just find that those things for me are, they're therapeutic. And I think it's kind of, it kind of like takes away from it when I start recording it. Like it puts some kind of pressure on me that I don't like. And so, um, like it kind of gets me in my head when the whole point is for me to get out of my head when I'm working on this kind of stuff. So I can't promise you that you're going to see a lot of plan with me's and journal with me's on this channel. But I also can't say that there won't be any. The main focus of this channel is going to be documenting my process from working a 9 to 5 job and running a small business, which is Cassie Makes Art, which is a sticker and stationery shop primarily. But I also am branching into apparel and I have prints of my original art as well. And... Um, I've been running Cassie Makes Art since November of 2021. Uh, started on Etsy. I'm still on Etsy, but I have my own website now as well, which was my big goal for this year, for 2023, was to launch my own website. And I did it. And uh, so that's CassieMakesArt.com. Hi, sorry. I had to get rid of that thing out of my hair. It was driving me nuts. And I also wanted to go put my earrings in, which I got yesterday. And they are made by a small business that I'm going to give a shout out two at the end so stay tuned I'm obsessed with them um but basically you know I 
I want this channel to be a way for me to document kind of my journey from, you know, what I'm doing now, working a nine to five, trying to run my business full time and be a full time content creator. You know, that's my, that's my dream. And it's my goal. It's not just my dream. It's something I'm working toward, or at least trying to. <laughs> and I want to take you guys along for that ride. And I just can't say how much I appreciate you. If you are here, if you are watching, I appreciate you so much. Um, and the other thing I want this channel to be is I want it to be a source of inspiration for you if you are somebody who wants to sell their art or start their own business, but you feel too intimidated um, by all of the things that people say to scare you out of starting your own small business, such as, you know, they'll say, oh, well, the taxes, you know, you got to pay attention to that and you got to make sure you do do this and you don't spend too much money and you blah, blah, blah. Like, people will try to talk you out of it. And I have learned so much since November 2021 when I started and I want to share everything I've learned with you all. I don't want to gatekeep. I want everybody to work toward doing what they want for a living. Because, like I said, we're not here for a super long time. And we shouldn't be working jobs that we don't care about just to pay the bills. If you have a talent, and we all have a talent. But if you have a talent and you want to pursue monetizing it, you know... If you want to pursue selling your art or your um, your service or whatever it is online. You know, I just want to share with you what I've learned and hopefully inspire you and let you know that, like, it is doable. And, like, I'm not there yet. I'm not doing this full time. But I have made some money from this. And so I can say, like, you know, I've turned a profit and that's huge for me. You know, it's... It's a very small profit and it's nothing I can live off of, but it helps. And I put every cent that I make back into my business. So, you know, that's why I'm still working a nine to five. I'm not paying myself a salary yet because I don't have the money to do that yet, but I will get there. And I just want to inspire you guys, hopefully, and let you know that, like, you can do this. You know, because I, one of my favorite things to do when I'm feeling really down on myself which happens, you know, I like to watch other small business owners who are doing what I want to be doing. It inspires me. But I find that there's not a whole lot of creators that are like me or like in my specific situation. I think, you know, from somebody who is neurodivergent, I think that I can offer some tips and maybe just share some things that you might not hear from certain other creators and I also want to share with you guys like the ups and downs and like I struggle with you know like I said I probably have undiagnosed ADHD but I also have I definitely have uh <laughs> diagnosed PMDD uh which is a uh menstrual related disorder that basically it's like when you hear, you know, somebody's PMSing, it's like that times 20. It's really, really bad and debilitating. And Raw Beauty Christy, one of my favorite creators ever, she has it. She has talked about it openly and everything that she says applies to me. So um, if you have listened to Raw Beauty Christy talk about her struggles with PMDD, it's very similar over here. And it's it's awful and there's no cure for it. And it is hereditary. Um, and it does run in my family with the with the females. So it's, you know, it's a struggle, but I am learning how to cope with it. Some months are better than others, and I just want to uh, take you guys along for the ride, you know? No matter how bumpy it is, I want to take you guys along, and I hope that you will be, um, you know, empowered in some way to do what you want to do. And I want to share with you all of my tips you know, if you want to be a small business owner, if you want to sell your art online and in person, I want to just share with you what I've learned and, you know, hopefully inspire you to do that. Because 
a lot of people will just try to tell you that you can't do it, that it's a waste of your time, that it's going to be too hard. They're going to tell you Etsy fees are too high. It's not worth it. Don't do Etsy. They're going to tell you all this stuff. And I just want to speak from my personal experience and share with you what I've learned and what I recommend. Again, this is just one person's account. You know, this is just what I have learned in the past couple years. And I want to take you guys along the journey as I hopefully continue to grow and build my brand and, you know, continue to get better as an artist. Because uh, that's one of the other things about me that maybe is sort of unique um, from a lot of the channels and things that I watch where, you know, people are running sticker shops full time or they're selling their art prints and, you know, they have like art YouTube channels and they do that full time, whatever it is. I... Up until like six months ago or something, and you can hear this documented on my podcast, which is called Keeping Myself Alive. Uh, I'll have a link to that in the description if you're interested, but I do upload the videos from that podcast also on this channel. So if you're interested in that, but I was like out loud openly saying I'm not an artist because I'm not a trained artist. I was never trained. I never learned how to paint, how to draw. I learned photography, which is an art in and of itself. I did go to school for that. I am a trained photographer. I worked as a professional photographer for over seven years. But as far as drawing, painting, digital art, I didn't know any of that. I knew Photoshop because I learned Photoshop in high school, then into college, um, was really like trained in Photoshop. So that's what I'm really comfortable with. And so basically I just took the skills that I learned in Photoshop and started just playing around and trying to apply those to, you know, learning how to do digital art. And my art is, for the most part, a hybrid. Um, I like to do mixed media. So I like to either paint or draw something with my hands on paper and then scan it in, bring it into Photoshop, add some digital elements. Um, I really just like that process of, like, combining different mediums. Um, but... You know, it's it's taken a lot for me to get to the point where I can just confidently say, like, yeah, I'm an, I'm an artist. You know, and to say that with my whole chest and to actually believe it. That's been hard. This is way too dark to use as a inner shimmer. That ain't gonna work. We're just gonna... We're just going to tap this out, and we're going to, I think I want to use a gold in the inner corner. But yeah, I mean, that's the other thing that I want to, like, hopefully share with you all and maybe inspire you. Um, just to know that, like, I am not a trained artist, and I am literally figuring stuff out as I go. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. And I'm just enjoying the process of learning. And uh, I just want you to know that if you have an interest in creating art, in whatever medium you want, you know, just go for it. And stop worrying about being good. Just go for it. Just make the art. You know what I mean? Just make it. We're all so worried about something being good. You know, we compare ourselves to other people, especially with the internet, as much as there's so many benefits, there's a lot of, you know, negatives that come with it. And one of those is comparing yourself to other people and not seeing your own talents and your own strengths. Because you just look at everybody else and you're like, oh my God. They're so much better than me. I'll never be that talented. I'll never create something that beautiful. You know, and I, I say this stuff to myself. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to act like I don't. Because I, I do. It's a problem. And I'm, I'm working through it. But it's hard. You know, it's, it's hard to not compare yourself to other people when you, you know, when you run a small business and you're trying to sell your stuff online, you kind of need to market yourself on social media. So I have to be on social media. But then, you know, the, the downside of that is I'm seeing people 
who are, you know, creating their art and sharing it. And I get really insecure about my own abilities. But as hypocritical as it is for me to say this, you know, we all have our own gifts and talents and our own style. And just because somebody's art might be more technically skilled than you, like maybe they have more skill, um, you think that their art is better than yours, you do not have to be the best to be successful. Y'all remember that Instagram and TikTok audio that was going viral like months and months ago that was like, it was this woman and I don't know who it is, but they were like, you don't have to be the best to have success. But I do, I remind myself of that all the time because it's so true. You don't. Think about some of the most popular artists or some of the art that you really enjoy, whether it's like original characters, like look at Hello Kitty, for example. Is that the most like intricate, like amazing, realistic art? No, but it's cute and it's enjoyable and it brings people joy. That's it. You don't have to be the best. That's like saying, you know, oh, well, there's no point in me starting a band because we're not going to be the best. You, everybody can't be the best and the best is subjective anyway. You know, my favorite band is My Chemical Romance. Big shocker, I know. Um, some people hate them and they would not consider them to be the best. But I do consider them to be the best. There is somebody that might look at your art and say that you are their favorite artist. That doesn't mean you're the best artist, you know? So just take what gifts you have and use them. And also, if you are not interested in selling art, you just want to make it. I want to inspire you to do that as well. Like, you don't need to monetize everything. For me, this is just the direction that I'm going in. I really want to sell my art. I want to try to make art into a career. But if you just want to make art just for fun, do that too. Like, just, just do it, you know? Share it if you want, but you don't have to share it. There's, there's no rule that says you have to share your art on Instagram. You don't. You can just make it and keep it for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. I might regret this. Yeah. Oh, God. That's a disaster. Yep. 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 This is why I don't do my makeup anymore because it's so fucking frustrating. Let's try it over here. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Well, this has worked out great. That's all right. It's okay. It's going to be fine. I know what I'm going to do. We're going to take Beauty Blender with a little concealer on it and just kind of wipe it off. This is why I usually do my eye makeup first, but I didn't today. Like before I do my base and everything, because now I'm messing up my base underneath, but I just can't. Uh, can't be bothered, as Christy would say. I just can't. I really wanted to use this damn star. Yeah, it looks like it's just running out of ink. Yeah. How about the heart one? Let's try the heart. And if this don't work, we're just going to give up on the whole stamp thing. Oh, the heart seems to be pretty good. No. Besides the center... You know what? I can't be bothered. I don't care. Oh my god. Just me. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on some mascara and we're not gonna worry about it because I don't have time. Oh, and I stabbed myself in the eye. This is why I don't do my makeup anymore. It is so frustrating. The best thing to do if this happens with the mascara getting underneath your eye is just wait. Just wait for it to dry. And it'll be a lot easier to take off. Just 
Just got to be patient, which is the hardest part for me. Uh, I just had a flashback. You know, when I was in high school, I this is so embarrassing, but I used to sleep in my eyeliner. And the next day to like start over and cover it up, I would just take my foundation sponge and just wipe it all the way. Dude, it was so bad. I feel like kids now have a lot more um, guidance when it comes to like doing their makeup. When I was in high school in uh, 2009, 2010, um, we didn't really have that much. So we were all just kind of winging it and my makeup routine was, uh, it was rough. Basically I was just trying to cover up the redness on my face and also wear some black eyeliner, except I only wore it on the bottom. Uh, Cause that was flattering, so. Anyway guys, uh, that's gonna be it for the makeup. First time I've done all that in a long time. I I will be back in a little bit to finish out this video and explain a little bit more about uh, the direction of the channel and tell you about some upcoming projects and things like that that I'm really excited about. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi guys, I'm back. So I just wanted to kind of give a little update on what I've, what I'm thinking, you know, how the channel is, is gonna kind of work. Uh, basically, you know, number one, my plan is to focus on, you know, just kind of following my journey uh, from working my nine to five job while also running a small business part time, uh, <laughs> but working full time hours and working for free. But you know, that's, that's how it is. Um, to hopefully, eventually, working full-time for myself. And um, I don't think I ever finished my thought earlier. Uh, again, undiagnosed ADHD here, but um, I wanted to just say that I'm not trying to demonize the, like, nine to fives overall or a full-time corporate job or, like, whatever it is. Like, I'm not saying that those are bad. I'm not saying that your goal should be to, you know, work for yourself and get out of those jobs. I'm not saying that at all. Everybody has their own desires and for me 10 years ago I never would have even considered leaving a traditional nine to five job and just going and working for myself it was not something that I was ready for it was not something that I wanted um but you know things change as you get older and just you're in different like chapters of your life and in this current chapter you know I have finally found something that I really enjoy doing that People seem to enjoy, you know, they seem to enjoy the things I create and I'm just really trying to uh, kind of keep it going. And I, again, like I, I see other people doing this, so it makes me think like, well, why can't I do it? And I want to just share with you all the things I've learned, you know, I want to hopefully inspire you and share, you know, share things with you and just be open and honest about, you know, this is what it's like and this is what I'm going through and it's not all easy. Um, I mean, it's not easy at all, but like people, you know, some of my family and friends get concerned that I'm working all the time and rightfully so. Uh, but that's just kind of the situation that I've been put in. I don't really have a choice. Um, I don't have the luxury of just being able to work a normal job and then log off and just, you know, go about my day. I mean, I could do that. Um, but I don't want to be stuck where I am. So I'm working hard to get out of this situation. I don't want to be working full time and working on my shop basically full time. I do work a lot. I spend a lot of time in front of this computer. I spend a lot of time indoors and I have to like force myself to take breaks and I'm trying to give myself that work-life balance that everyone deserves. Um, and, you know, my ultimate goal is to be able to not have to ask for permission when I want to take time off. You know, I, I want to be able to just take time off, build it into my own schedule and have some control over my life. And uh, I know that this is not going to be easy and I know that it's not going to be, it's not some utopia of like, oh, you work for yourself and 
you know, you don't have a boss, you're your own boss, but there's bad things that come with that, you know. Um, one of them is the lack of stability. But I think as we've seen throughout the past few years, stability with jobs doesn't really exist in the way that it used to. I'm very fortunate in that I have pretty, pretty good job security. But most people don't. And there are so many people who think that, like, they're in this job and, you know, like, they've got it made. Like, they love their job and they're making decent money and they're like, this is great. And then they get just laid off. Um, you know, nothing is secure. <laughs> nothing is stable. There's no guarantee that you're not going to get laid off or that you're going to get fired or whatever. Like, and, and I, I'm not happy with where I am in my life. You know, I've... I've talked about it um, semi-extensively uh, on my podcast, and I go into a lot, you know, more detail about it on my uh, Patreon. Um, I'll have links to everything in the description if you're interested. But I did have what I thought was a dream job, other than the money sucking, <laughs> not getting paid enough. But I loved my job and I loved my coworkers. And I thought like, this is, this is it. Like, this is awesome. Like, I'm never going to leave this. And things just got worse and worse and worse. And while I didn't get laid off or fired, I basically had no choice but to leave. And, um, you know, that, that really opened my eyes to like, you know, you're, you're not going to be doing the same thing forever. That was a great job for me for a period of time in my life. But that chapter ended and it was time to do something new. And, you know, like I said, I'm not happy with where I'm at, but I'm working toward a place where I can hopefully be happy. Um, I think so many of us are miserable in our jobs and we're just looking for an escape. We just want, we want to take a vacation. We want to get some time off and not be stuck in front of a computer. You're not crazy for thinking that way what's crazy is the fact that this is what society has become uh is that we just work like we just work all the time that's not normal we work so hard and histor our wages are historically low compared to the productivity that we produce you know i, I won't go into a whole a whole uh, spiel about capitalism and how it has failed us and how our government has failed us and all of that. But you guys already know we're not getting paid what we deserve and we can barely afford to live. But I'm trying to look on the other side of that and think, well, you know, if, if things, if I loved what I was doing right now, if I loved how my life was going the money I was making, the kind of lifestyle I had, then I wouldn't be pursuing art. And I wouldn't be pursuing a career in content creation and and uh, selling my art. So I'm trying to just look at it from that perspective and say, well, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I'm just trying to uh, try to work to, to get to where I'm happy with how my life's going. You know, I'm not 23 anymore. I'm 30. And uh, I'm just tired. I'm tired of being miserable all the time. I'm tired of being stuck, of feeling like I'm stuck. I'm tired of being treated just like a number and not like a human being. And um, I just, I hope you guys will join me along for this ride. And, um, you know, I, I do really hope to be a full-time artist and to run my shop full-time and to also do YouTube and hopefully monetize that and just find a way to make a, you know, make my own career, you know. And with that, I want to hopefully inspire people and want to, you know, connect with you all and let you know that you can do whatever you want to do, you know. It's not going to be easy, uh, but you can do it. And... You know, I believe in you. If you want to start your own business or if you just want to make art just for the sake of making art, which is great. I think everyone should do that. You don't have to monetize everything. You know, just like for me, I love playing video games and I tried like streaming on Twitch, but I just, 
video games is like one of the few hobbies that I have in my life that I don't monetize and I don't want to make it into another thing that I have to do. I just want it to be something that I do to relax. You know what I'm saying? So, but for this, you know, while I do enjoy every second of it, almost every second of it, of running a shop and making art and learning how to make my own stickers and getting into making shirts and, um, you know, different stationary products. Oh, there's a hummingbird. There's a hummingbird outside the window. While I do enjoy almost everything about what I'm doing with my shop and with Cassie Makes Art, it's not easy. And it doesn't always feel like work, which can lead to me overworking myself. So I have to kind of check in with myself from time to time and say, okay, you need a break, you know? Anyway, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the direction I'm hoping to take the channel. I hope to, um, you know, just kind of do some small business sticker shop owner vlogs, um, talk about, you know, what I'm going through, the highs and lows, show you the products I'm making, kind of the processes of how I do it. Um, and then just, you know, take you guys along for the ride and hopefully inspire you to make art, even if it's just for the sake of making art, or if you want to try to sell it, I want to show you how you can do that too. You don't need to be miserable in your job. If you are miserable, if you don't like your job, if you feel stuck, you want to do something different, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Not even yourself. Don't tell yourself that you can't do it because you can do it because other people are doing it. It is possible. You have to believe in yourself and you have to trust in the timing of the universe or whatever God you believe in or whatever it is. You just have to know that like everybody has their own timeline and just because Susie on TikTok went viral and was able to take her small business full time within six months of opening doesn't mean that's going to happen to you, you know? As long as you are continuing to try and you are, you know, continuing to move in the right direction, just keep going, you know? I It's hard, and I have so many moments where I want to give up. But what would be even harder is settling and then looking back at my life in 10 years and saying, wow, I wonder, I wonder what would have happened if I kept going with, with the shop. I wonder what would have happened if I kept doing YouTube or whatever it is. I don't want to look back with regret. I don't want to look back and say, wow, all I did was just work for somebody else and make money to pay bills. That's not the life that I want to live. So I'm working to get out of it. So uh, thanks for being here. If you haven't, if you know, if you're interested in joining me along for the journey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, please, uh, Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of all my future uploads. I'm going to try really hard to do one video per week. That's my goal anyway. I put some shorts in between. Um, but, you know, again, I'm, I just can't really commit to more than that right now with running the shop and then working full time um, and editing everything myself. And it just it takes a little bit. But uh, I just want to, um, you know, try to be semi consistent and. Just keep, keep plugging away. Um, but yeah, small business shout out. So, Jabebo Earrings, J-A-B-E-B-O. So it's jabebo.com. You can also find them at Jabebo Studio on Etsy. They make earrings from cereal boxes. So I'm just gonna briefly read a little bit about their process here because I think this is so cool. Cereal box paperboard is the base material for our earrings. We transform cereal boxes by laminating the front and back panels together and fixing our images to the front surface which are then punched out with custom made die cuts. We source cereal boxes locally. People often visit the store just to drop them off. Our original designs are fun, sophisticated, and created with science and nature as a source of inspiration. The mismatched sides allow us to expand on the theme in a way that often adds interest and educational value. All of our product is designed and produced in Belafont, Belafont, Belafonti, Belafont, Pennsylvania. Learn more about the people at the Jabeep Studio. So 
I highly encourage you to go to their website and check them out. I actually got these from a state park. Um, they sell in a lot of state parks because, you know, like they said, nature is a big uh, source of inspiration. I love bats and I saw these bat earrings and I had to have them. And then seeing that they're made from recycled cereal boxes is just so cool. So um, that's my small business shout out for this video. I'm going to try to do these every video and just, you know, I think I think there's room for all of us as small business owners and creators. And we all bring something unique to the table. And, um, you know, I, I'm not perfect. I don't shop small 100% of the time. But I shop small whenever I possibly can. And I want to spread the word uh, whenever I find products I think are really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I'll have links to everything that I talked about in the description. My podcast, my Patreon. My shop Instagram, which is where I'm most active. So if I'm not active on here, you'll see me there. Um, my Obviously my website, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope you will join me along this ride. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be back on YouTube and to kind of go in this new direction and not feel like pigeonholed to where I'd have to do plan with me videos just because other, you know, sticker shops or other people in the planner community are doing plan with me's. I'm still using my planners. I'm still decorating my planners. I mean, look at this. I'm still using my planners, still decorating them, still playing with stickers a lot. And I'm not saying I'll never do a plan with me on camera and maybe even do like a live one and just kind of show you guys how I uh, decorate my journals and planners and maybe even do some like painting. You know, again, I'm trying to trying to get over like I get a little weird when the camera's on me and I'm painting and I feel like it takes me like I get into my head too much. But I'm really going to try to show you a little bit more of my processes. So, anyway, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Um, that's where I am the most active. I'll have the link in the description. Um, it's just shop.cassiemakesart. And, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye!